Healthinistas and welcome to my channel 50 something. This channel is for the overall well-being of people 50 and older. But don't worry, if you're in your teens, 20s, 30s and 40s, you can certainly apply the content. I am still going to be giving you every Thursday some video about wellness. However, I'm starting a new series. Recently, I was fortunate enough to be a living donor. And so I'm starting a new series entitled My Life as a Living Donor. What I found out is when I was going through this, trying to go through the decision of becoming a living donor, I wished that I could have a video of somebody that had already been a donor and pretty much sit there and listen to what they had gone through. That would have helped me a lot. So I decided that I would put a videos or a set of videos together to help anybody else that might be contemplating becoming a living donor or um, maybe somebody that um, hadn't even thought about it might see this video and then decide to be a living donor. Before I get started, I want to give you some facts about kidney disease and the number of people that are currently waiting to get a kidney transplant. According to the National Kidney Foundation, there are over 100,000 people that are waiting for a kidney transplant. Out of those 100,000 people that are waiting, every month, over 3,000 new people are added to that list. And according to the National Kidney Foundation, in 2014, 17,000 transplants were done, a little bit over 17,000 transplants. Now, out of those 17,000 transplants, a little bit over 11,000 were from deceased donors. And only over 5,000 were from living donors. In 2014, over 4,000 people died while waiting for kidney donation. An additional over um, 3,600 got too sick to be able to be good candidates for a kidney transplant. So they're on dialysis. And the longer that you're on dialysis, some people get too sick to be able to be good candidates. So knowing that, I had a niece or have a niece that um, due to an autoimmune disease had, had a need for a kidney transplant. And I really got tired of watching her suffer for just a young lady to be on dialysis. Um, it's, if you notice, the people, there are two types of dialysis that people are on. And um, one is hemodialysis, where it's done through the blood. And um, they might be at the center three times a week and they'll be there for several hours and it just takes a toll on them. And then there's peritoneal dialysis, which is done through a port in the peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdomen. And they can do it at home um, during the night, which takes about nine hours. And then sometimes they might need it during the day as well, but they are able to get better control. They don't feel as wiped out. But with peritoneal dialysis also comes a potential for infection. So I decided that I would be tested and see if I was a match for my niece. And I went ahead and did that. And um, by the grace of God, we definitely were a match. Um, and so this is my way of helping anybody else that is going through these decisions. In episode one, which is what I'm doing now, I'm going to give you a few factors that you should consider when you're trying to come to terms with your decision. And then in episode two, I will talk about the tests 
that are needed for you to go through to find out if you're a match. And then in episode three, I'll talk about the actual um, operation and what it entails. And my hope is that over the next few months and years that I, I'm going to be updating you so that you can go through this process with me after I've donated a kidney. What is my life like? Um, what are some of the symptoms I have? Because um, studies have shown that we can live with one kidney successfully for years and live a full life. So I'm hoping that um, this, these series will help you. I don't know when I'm going to be posting new episodes, so you subscribe and when those episodes are out, you get a notification. That way you'll be ready for the next episode. All right, the first thing I want to talk about, first of all, I want to give you six things to consider if you decide that you want to um, become a living donor. The first thing is make up your mind, be committed 100% if you decide that you're going to be donating one of your kidneys. Go into the testing with the idea that once you're a match, you are fully committed to let go of that kidney. Because if you're only going into it and halfway thinking about it, you're, you're scared, I would advise you don't do it at all. Because if you're not committed, you're going to change your mind, there will be disappointment. The second point that I want you to consider is that don't tell the recipient that you're going through testing. I chose not to tell my niece until I found out I was a match because I didn't want to give her false hope. So don't tell them um, that you're going through the testing and then when you do find out that you are a match, then it's really, it's pleasant news. It's, 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 un, it's indescribable when the person gets that news. The third point I want to tell you is that make sure you include a loved one or two in your decision and evaluation process. By that I mean, for me, I told my husband, I've been married for over 27 years and there's no way that something this large I would embark upon without having told him about what I was doing and to try to get that support, which I did fully from him. Um, the other person I told was a member of my family, which is my younger sister, and we're the closest in age, so we do a lot of things together. So I had those two people in on it from the very beginning, and I didn't let the rest of the family know till everything matched up, and I could finally tell the recipient, and I could finally tell the rest of my family, including my own children. So I would say include a loved one or two in your decision process. The fourth thing I'd like you to consider is that make sure you have a good support system because this surgery after it happens you're not you're going to be under a weight weight restriction and you will need the support of your loved ones to help you to help you with meals to help get things for you so um, you know and help you through the process also emotionally because people can be affected after, after the surgery. So it's important that you have a support system in place. Um, the fifth thing I would like for you to consider is that um, are you going to be okay if that kidney is rejected? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. If you can't answer that, if you cannot be, you think you're not going to be okay if that kidney is rejected, then you should not be going through it at all because then you might be depressed. So for me, my mindset was if it didn't work, then at least I tried. That was the mindset I was going into. So I, I wouldn't have been completely devastated and disappointed because I knew that at least I tried. This thing I would like for you to remember is that you are giving the gift of life. That didn't dawn on me until the nephrologist came in and the very first thing he said to me was, I want to thank you 
because you do know that you're given the gift of life. So realize that at the end of this decision, you're helping extend somebody else's life. So I hope that this has been helpful. Tune in for episode two and let's try to help one another. God bless.